This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Dan, thank you everybody for joining us. With me today is John Cameron in the middle and Richard Fields down on the other end. All right, gentlemen, it's been a, a, a raucous month, I suppose, in the LP. Uh, the um, old guard, shall we say, has been uh, swept away and the, a new... Oh, that shall we say a new brand of leadership has a has been <laughs> has been introduced. We'll call it that. I mean, uh, a, a band, a band of leadership. The yeah. new band of leadership, and you know, as someone who's inside the party, there's uh, there was some valid arguments to be made about you know how uh, the failures of, of leadership of previous leaderships were needed to be adjusted for, and so there's some there's some. Uh, truth to be told, but the question becomes, is the leadership that is replacing it actually any better? Or are they just having the problems of a different sort? Yeah, I I do, actually, since I was, uh, you know, nominally part of the old leadership uh, for a couple of years, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I, I can I can speak to the as press secretary for the for the national LP. Uh, I can I can speak to the uh, uh, frustrations of the Mises crowd. They were saying we're not getting enough attention, and I was saying we're not getting enough attention. And I don't think it's a matter of whether or not the Mises crowd is in, is in charge or the Sarwar crowd is in charge. It doesn't make any difference. The old line media is simply uh, it's it's in their interest not to give us attention because they are in the pockets literally in the pockets of uh, the clowns to the left and the jokers to the right, as John John's t-shirt eloquently expresses it. Uh, they're, they're in the process of covering politics as if it were a team sport. And uh, a, a third player on the, on, on, the, uh, on, the, on the football field, so to speak, doesn't help their, their narrative. Not to mention the fact that you've got media on the left and media on the right that are very, very much in the camp of whoever whoever's team that they're cheerleading for. And that's what it is, cheerleading. So we, we saw a move from the more liberal wing of the uh, Libertarian Party, which I consider myself to be a part of, to the more uh, conservative populist wing of the Libertarian Party, the Mises Caucus, which uh, I have I have some problems with. I understand where they're coming from philosophically. Uh, the, the two big issues were uh, abortion. They wanted to take the plank out, and they immediately did. Uh, you can have honest libertarians on the uh, pro cho- pro choice, and you can have honest libertarians being uh, pro life. Uh, I, you know, the pro life people say, well, it's a life. We need to defend the sanctity of life. And if you look at it that way, uh, that's a good thing. You know, that's 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 an argument that can be uh, respected, if not agreed with. And I certainly don't agree with it. Uh, the same way with uh, with. Uh, uh, immigration. You can make arguments that as long as we have a welfare state, immigration it can be self-defeating. But I, I don't agree with that either because most of the immigrants that we come are less apt to be uh, dependent on the welfare state than our, our native, Amor- uh, native, you know, the people who have been here for generations. So I, I don't. I, I think empirically that's an, an argument that falls falls apart as well. And as far as the media coverage is concerned, they're going to try to get media coverage by being more edgy on the conservative side as opposed to being more edgy on the uh, liberal side. Good luck with that. They're not going to get any more coverage from the mainstream media, and they're not going to get any more coverage from the uh, uh, conservative Fox type media either because, again, media are cheerleaders, cheerleaders for the clowns and the jokers. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm not all familiar with the politics of the Libertarian Party. I've never been involved in it, but um, I think the the from a marketing standpoint, the Libertarian Party uh, does a um, um, does a horrible job. And and you know one of the one of the things about it is is it's not um, both parties, the the clowns and the jokers rely on or the duopoly really because there's they really you could shove a razor blade with a lot of effort in between them there you know there's real no really no differences in the parties now that i can see you know they had the tea party or goldwater type republicans and there were some differences um and so yeah i agree actually with that comment that just came in 
uh, about the whole thing. It's a mess. But, you know, the, the first thing you have to do before you message is um, figure out what your message is. And then you have to couch it in a way that, that it's acceptable uh, to people that you point out you know, unlike the Republicans or the Democrats, which both operate from a position of let's make people as afraid as we can and 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 make sure they they believe that we have a solution to their fear. Whereas that's not the libertarian message. The libertarian message is one of hope. Uh, you know, these that that if you follow this path, that that things will get better and you'll have more freedom, not less. You don't have to give up freedom. And I don't think the Libertarian Party's ever clearly identified that and, and pitched it. Uh, you know, we, we all know about polls that, that say if you scrubbed uh, the, the, the uh, label off of Libertarian thought, probably 60, 70 percent of the people in this country would lean pretty much Libertarian, and except for a couple of real trigger issues. So... That's a terrible job of messaging, and, and still, you, and, and until the party can decide what its message is, and frame it in the right way, it's, it's never going to break through. Um, you know, people are aching right now for, for to get rid of the clowns and jokers. They just uh, they 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 need somebody to clearly define something that's different and and lead them to voting that way. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with you, John, on the messaging. I think the messaging has been spot on for really, you know, with, you know, small tweaks here and there necessary, but it's been, it's been correct from the beginning. Uh, and the problem is that that message, the message that we want to put out there is the antithesis of the message that the Democratic controlled media and the Republican controlled media want to put out there. They're not going to uh, carry our water for us. It's simply not going to happen. That's why uh, the uh, uh, why social media is so important and why it's so important that uh, that uh, social media not be uh, constrained in the same way that uh, that uh, establishment media has has already for decades been constrained. Uh, and and the, the the only way the libertarian will break through is the way that Jeff Hewitt did it in in Riverside County. Uh, that is at the local level by winning enough races at the local level so that it becomes uh, obvious that you cannot cover politics without without covering the political without covering the, the libertarian candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, initially, that that coverage will be negative, and that's fine. Uh, there's an old saying in the news business or in the publicity business, give me any kind of publicity, bad publicity, good publicity, I don't care. As long as it's uh, publicity, it's publicity. And that's that's the stage that libertarians are at right now. And that's that's a, a long grassroots uh, kind of an approach uh, that I think, uh, uh, James, you might be able to uh, comment on because you're, you're, right in the, you're right in the thick of it. Well, it's... It's a strange thing is because what we don't do is we don't actually sell ourselves very well. We, we don't sell what's different. We will jump on to what's the, the left-handed messaging or we'll try to latch on to the right-handed messaging. We'll try to latch on to whatever is popular at the moment. But what we don't do is actually sell our fundamental truths. And it's not about being edgy. It's about being so it's about speaking so we can be heard. If our communities that we operate in, whether it's nationally or your local communities or your state, if your voters, if the, the communities don't feel like you've, like they've been heard, don't feel like they can be trusted to express themselves to you, they're not going to care what we say. They're not going to care about any of that. And so that comes from leadership. And that comes from if your communities don't believe, not don't they think, they have to know for a fact that you care about them. They have to know it. And because they're not going to take it, they're not going to risk taking a big change unless they know for a fact we care about them. And the fact is, if we continue to throw each other under the bus and then back it up and ride over each other, why would the public think that we care about them if we don't even care about ourselves? We don't even care about our own community enough to take care of ourselves and to help help ourselves. We destroy each other. We take ourselves down. And then we wonder why the communities, why the countries won't turn to us. It's, it's no surprise to me that our communities... Well, that our voters don't turn to us when we attack, routinely attack each other, and not in the philosophical way where we're just kind of arguing philo philo philosophy. That's kind of natural and that's routine. I mean, we genuinely attack each other's humanity. 
at times. And it's and so there's no reason for a Democrat or Republican to come to us because they can get that there and they already have power. So why would they come here? We don't well, offer anything no, different. No, an old joke in academia, which is that the reason faculty wars are so fierce is because the stakes are so small. And that's kind of where we are as the LP. Uh, and I said a couple of shows ago that I think it's really important that we focus on the issues that matter to everybody. And those are primarily uh, where we can get a broad agreement across <coughs> left and right are on economic issues. Uh, we're not going to get broad agreement on abortion. We're not going to get broad agreement on immigration, unfortunately. We're not going to get broad agreement on any of the social issues, but we can get very broad agreement on all of the economic issues, primarily inflation and prim primarily right now. I think I think that the Ron Paul movement showed that very, very uh, explicitly back in 2012 and 2016. And as long as we focus on that uh, as, as, liberty, as, a liber as a party, and uh, and you know, really drive home the fact that the powers that be have abandoned the people and are operating in their uh, against their interest are, are basically uh, the, the banking system, the Federal Reserve, the uh, the taxation system, all of them are enriching themselves at our expense. And as long as we can drive that uh, point home, both left and right, will be able to identify it because everybody knows that they're getting fleeced. Uh, every time you go to the grocery store, every time you fill your tank and it costs you 100 or $150, uh, we know we're getting fleeced. And the only thing that we uh, have to do really is make sure that people understand exactly how that happens and how it's not because of greedy corporations, although they uh, might get greedy at times. It's not because of... Uh, uh, any of the uh, shibboleths of the left or the right, it's because we have a corrupt banking system. And that's not just in the U.S., it's worldwide. Central banks across the world are uh, engaged in the same game. And as long as we can make sure that we are repeating and emphasizing the Ron Paul message uh, and the Fed, et cetera, uh, and drive that point home and say how the foreign wars are killing us, how the... Uh, uh, the drug war is killing us. You know those three issues: economy, foreign wars, drugs. That's enough to drive the drive us home. And and then uh, we don't. Then, then what we need to do, as far as the, the civil liberties issues, is make sure that we don't piss anybody off. And I guarantee you, we pissed a lot of people off, or the Mises caucus pissed a lot of people off when they took off the bigotry plank. There's no point. There's no there's no advantage in removing the bigotry plank from the national uh, LP platform. That was just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was an unforced, unforced error. That was just yeah. dumb. Because if you if you actually take the argument that the word bigotry is so overused and misused that it's become meaningless, okay, I can actually buy that. I can actually kind of buy the argument. But at the same time, that means it's meaningless. So the only thing it does by taking it out is cause a problem. <laughs> well, you give it, yeah, you give it meaning. Uh, and I'll support both your points here. You give it meaning by taking it away. If if it's become invisible and you leave it there, you do no damage. But if it's if it's still visible to other people, they, you know the, what the, what the media is going to get the the lamestream media if they get anything, is that uh, oh the the libertarians are now not only crazy but they're they're bigot they're bigot they're bigots and they're crazy because they took the 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 the, the protection against bigotry out of their platform. So I absolutely agree with. Yeah, with if you lift it there, it's meaningless. If you take it out, it means the worst thing anybody thinks of it. Yeah. That's what happens, and that's yeah. exactly what happened. And it was an unforced error. And but I, Richard has a point. What I what I ran ended up running on by the end of my campaign, I was running on what I called uh, Mr. Smith goes to Washington issues. I wasn't running on any libertarian. I was running on simple, basic function of government. Are you in, do the do they inform you of what's going on? Do you understand the policies that you're passing? Do they stand up and ask and answer questions? You know, to explain the policies that you just passed, or do they just pass them and let you figure it out on your own? Just Mr. Smith goes to Washington type issues, and I had a lot of success with that. And I, you know, considering how much money we spent or didn't spend, so it, you know, the, there is room for us to play, and we just play the wrong game. So we're just playing in the wrong system. Yeah. So I and, actually, and then there is a saying. I think we need to. I don't know if we're going to move on to the other two major hot topics. I guess we are, but there's a, there's a saying that all politics is local, and that's the approach you took, and and 
you know, there's another you talked about the economics, but there's, you know, the, 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 the crime issue is, uh, you know, the, the feeling of lack of safety uh, that people have uh, in their homes and in their work and in their travels and all the rest of that is a big thing. And, you know, if we can, you know, co connect the, the police state to the lack of safety and the drug laws to the lack of safety and all the rest of that, we can pull this in. But again, the econ economics drives it all, as Richard says, but we have to, you know, make it local politics. And, and you know, it, and, uh, and if you can do that, you know, things might change. Yeah, well, speaking of things changing, John, there has been a lot of change this last last week here. Um, the Supreme Court kind of overruled a, uh, what was, I'm trying to figure out exactly what they ruled. It was a concealed carry ban in New York City, right, that they overruled. Yeah. And so now, concealed carry, you don't need an excuse, essentially, to apply to concealed carry. You, you don't, don't need, need a permission slip. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So well, I think you still uh, need a permission slip, but they can't deny you for you need actually a reason to deny it or something. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it plays it's out. shall carry as opposed to may carry. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the, you know, you the, barring having been a felon or some uh, egregious background, the uh, powers that be must issue a concealed license. They can't say, well, we'll do it if we feel like it. Mm. I'm going to interject something, a phrase I use, powers that we let be, to bring it back to the fact that we do have okay. some control over it. And I'm not correcting you, Richard. I just like people to to hear that, you know, they they, they do have a choice, right? You know, you, you can vote these clowns out and vote some libertarians in. Um, so, you know, it's not it's not something we're stuck with. But it's, uh, you know, there's the Constitution, there was a, a big free-for-all about... Um, and enumerated rights and unenumerated rights when when they had arguments about whether there should even be a Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights said pretty specifically, you know, that uh, you have a right to carry arms. So, you know, in essence, uh, all of these uh, local ordinances and all these state laws and all the, the things that they've they've put into place um, have have violated something that's specifically spelled out as an enumerated right in the Constitution of the United States. It doesn't matter, um, you know, whether it's English common law or or uh, uh, anything else. But that's where, you know, the idea that we didn't need to spell out rights because in in all the law and history that American law came from, people had the right to do this. And um, yeah, and yeah, go ahead, Richard. Yeah, and 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 the, uh, the the right to defend yourself is a basic human right. It's you know it's something that existed before government ever uh, took ever ever occurred. Uh, at, you know, at the tribal level, people uh, instinctively know they have the right to defend themselves and their and their families. And, uh, the property. and, yeah. and you know, and 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 the uh, Supreme Court has ruled in that uh, in that direction. I think it's interesting. There's a a, a town in. Uh, Texas, not too far from Uvalde, where uh, the, the 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 school officials have been carrying for for you know a half a dozen years or, or something like that. They don't have a problem, uh, and schools or gun permission zones don't have a a problem with uh, mass shooters. The only place you have a problem with mass shooters is where guns are ostensibly not allowed. It's just gun it's a free zone. fire zone. Yeah. And then, you know, a bunch of the arguments that have come out of out of New York about it, uh, you know, now you won't you won't know if somebody on the subway is carrying a gun or you won't know if somebody in the theater is carrying a gun or somebody in the school is carrying a gun. Hold Which on. is good. You didn't you didn't know that before. They were just doing <laughs> and now, it. And, yeah, and, now, and now the honest people will be carrying a gun, not yeah. the not the crooks. Not the criminals. And so, yeah. you know, the, the they're reasoning they're it. using, as usual, is specious and fear-laden. But we yeah. all know from the statistics that are, are virtually impossible to put together, but they have been put together, um, you know, uh, more guns, less crime. Not more guns, more crime. And, and two million times a year, armed citizenry either prevents or stops a crime. And these statistics are never talked about because the, the powers that be, as Richard says, are the powers that we let be. It's in their best interest to have an unarmed populace uh, who believes that their safety is completely dependent upon the police state. 
But the police stop and apprehend, well, stop way fewer criminal acts than an armed citizenry does. And um, so, you know, we'll find out, you know, the, 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 uh, <laughs> you can pick and choose your statistics, but it's pretty argue, it's pretty hard to argue with those. And, and, you know, if I'm going into that, uh, if I'm going into a shooting gallery, knowing that the, the, the uh, little babies can't shoot back, then uh, I'll go into that shooting gallery. But if I go into a shooting gallery knowing that the, the, the shepherd might be carrying uh, a Glock and might have spent some recent range time, I'm going to think twice about it, even if I am freaking crazy. And the people who do all of this, these lunatic things are freaking crazy. But, you know, crazy people still balance odds. And most of, there's some very good articles out there, most of these, um, these mass shootings are basically death by cop. So let's just make sure that, that, uh, that um, you know, that, that these people are actually committing suicide. They just want to make a statement, and take a bunch of people with them. Let's just make sure that uh, the opportunity for them to commit suicide happens much more quickly. Well, that, that's actually an interesting uh, question, John, because we want to solve this gun violence problem, but we don't ask the question of, you know, these people want to go out, they want the world to feel their pain. Okay, so what's the world doing that's causing these people pain? Mm-hmm. We, we don't actually never, we never ask that question. We never ask, well, asked, what did the I world do to these people that makes them cause this pain? I well, it's asked on the left, but but I'm I, quite, quite frankly, I'm not really all that concerned about the pain that causes people to shoot kids. Uh, there's well, another no, but, argument. But if you want to prevent it in the future, you 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 actually have to stop it. You know, stopping it at the gun laws yeah. is not going to stop it. You have to stop it way sooner. It's yeah. far too well, late. and the fact that you know, and this this is something that that uh, people don't want to hear either. You know, you're you're the chance of you dying from. I got to run the statistics, but I'm willing to bet that the uh, you have a much greater chance as a child uh, to die from. Um, well, I don't know a very rare form of cancer. Let's pick the rarest form of cancer that attacks kids out there that you ever do in a classroom, even though the classrooms basically have a sign on them that says "We are unarmed. Come shoot us and get on the news." So statistically, um, very few kids get shot. I wish it was none. But and I'm not saying, please, please don't scream at me while I'm mid mid sentence here. Okay, uh, let me put up the, the sign. You can you can email John here at counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. There we go. We can get everybody. Anyway, <laughs> I'll forward it to him. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not saying it's 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 not something we need to be concerned about. But you know, the the if it leads, it bleeds. Richard and I were both in publishing for a very long time, and the media. Richard's been in the media back in well, I won't, we won't go into how long. It's a long time. Um, and if it leads, it bleeds. And you know, with with social media and instant electronics and all the rest of these people, the worst, the the, the craziest, stupidest, stupidest, most outrageous, most violent thing that you do is instantly the lead story. And I'm not saying that we should censor these people. I'm not saying we shouldn't report it. But um, I think that feeds into it, especially when people are isolated through the pandemic lockdowns and they're, they're, they're being fed the negativity. You know, there's lots of studies out there that social media, uh, people who engage regularly in social media are way more depressed than, than people who interact and shake hands and sit across the table from someone. And the last one other years, point, one other constitutional point I want to make before we move oh, on, which is okay. that the 14th Amendment uh, guarantees that the states and local governments can't violate the Second Amendment. So constitutionally, uh, it's, it's ironclad that everybody has the right to defend themselves, to conceal carry or open carry for that matter. Mm-hmm. Open carry much better. That way you know who's packing. Yeah. So a question is, do we want to have three minutes? Do we want to tackle abortion or do we want to talk about the New York mayor kind of signaling he's going to refuse to follow the Supreme Court? I guess that's the question. Richard, do you have a couple minutes to, to kind of guide some leadership for the libertarian community on this? Boy, abortion yeah. issue, maybe? You know, I, one of the first things that the, uh, the Mises people did is take the uh, abortion plank, which was pro-choice, uh, out of the uh, national platform. I disagree with that. I think uh, Roe versus Wade 
largely got it right, at least if not constitutionally, as cer certainly as far as uh, common sense is concerned, which, you know, the ruling said basically it goes back to, to Blackwell and common law, which is mm -hmm. that as soon as an infant is quickened, in other words, as soon as the mother can feel the uh, infant move in her uh, belly, that's the point at which we need to take the life seriously. Uh, another way of putting it, as soon as the, the baby can uh, theoretically survive outside the womb with medical care and so forth, that's when we need to really look at it as a human life, not before. And I think that uh, is a, a very, a very uh, pragmatic way of handling the abortion uh, question. Uh, and I think it was a mistake to take it out of the platform. Uh, I, I, you know, it'll just feed into the... Uh, uh, typecasting of the libertarians as just uh, uh, Republicans who like to do drugs. Now, well, I think if more Republicans did drugs, that they'd probably make a little more sense. But then again, that might not hold water because a, a lot of Democrats do drugs and they're looney tunes too. I absolutely agree with Richard. You know, the, the, the history of our country, um, abortion is something that's that's existed in this country since it was it was created on four big sheets of paper or maybe it's three big sheets of paper it's about all you need really uh, common sense will take care of the rest and that was that was the uh, the standard people used when the baby quickens when the mother can actually feel the baby in the womb you know it's moving um, then um, you're not supposed to get rid of it because this is life. It's a life that hasn't showed up yet. There are, are maybe 10% of the people in this country or 15% believe that abortion should be uh, banned in all, in uh, all circumstances. There's 25, 30% tops that believe that it should be allowed in all circumstances. But just about everyone, um, you know, when they understand reproductive science, would agree with that that position that Blackstone enumerated and that, that this country has operated under until these states made it basically illegal to do something that had always been legal. And that's when we well, get in trouble. Well, all I have to say is it was no surprise to me. Ten years ago, there was a push for starting to do mandatory vaccines. And I mentioned that what we was doing was undercutting the concept of my body, my choice, and keeping politics out of the doctor's office. And so it was no surprise to me when... When the religious right shut up over that issue, that it was going to be, well, that's where they're going to take it. And in 10 years, Roe v. Wade was going to fall down. And here we go. Roe v. Wade has fallen down because we didn't actually understand that the what we're actually supporting in Roe v. Wade wasn't the right to abortion. It was the right to your own body, the right to control your doctor, the right to, to have that freedom, you know, to make those decisions for yourself. And we thought it was a right to an abortion. And it is not. It's a right to, you know, have the, your relationship for your doctor and your and your relationship to yourself, you know, what, whether the government can force you to put something in your body or take it out is now, you know, once you decided that, once you decided that the government has a right to your body, the government has a right to your body. And gentlemen, we're out of time. Thank you for joining me and all, all of you. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next week.